Hey, I'm just gonna say thank you for clicking on this video. Enjoy this interview as much as you can. Grab some snacks. Enjoy. First, have you seen my videos and did you like them? <laughs> yeah, man. I I, I remember. Uh... I remember you from years ago. Oh, okay, uh, nice. And, and it was, yeah, like, I don't think you were getting started as a content creator, but I think you were getting started with Blade and Sorcery. And, and yeah, I remember we chatted on Discord. Yeah, we and, did. Uh, yeah, and I was watching uh, your earliest videos years ago, and I remember you were doing these um, compilations. Yes. Like, uh, I think you caught like brute, brutal compilation one, two, three. And I remember at the time thinking, oh, that's cool. I was like, I used to do stuff like that. I used to do like, you know, fight combination one, two, three. But damn, man, I just checked your <laughs> YouTube there for the first time in a while. And uh, you're on like 90 something or like 98 or something like that. It's like, my God, that's fantastic, dude. I'm over 100K now and uh, it's it's just great. Uh, oh, I love man. the community of the Sorcery. I love everything with it and all that. I love that uh, the, the constant update and how hard you guys work on this game. So thank you uh, for... Oh, like, I love it, being... man. That's, that's great. And, and dude, congrats to you. And also, I, I, something I always really liked about your videos, you're one of the few kind of anti-hyperbole yeah. YouTubers, and I really like that. Yeah, I yeah. really respect that. Yeah, I, I yeah, that's, that's nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah, you just do game. You just do like good gameplay, and that's it. You don't even put commentary. In. I don't. Um, I don't. I like to go right into the video and not like talk too much and all that. Give a yeah. Intro, that yeah. I know that how boring that could be. So and uh, at at the same time, my bad English. So it's just <laughs> not worth it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Now your English, your English is good, man. Yeah. But, yeah. but no, not 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 even that. It's just like I just like that. Uh, you don't go for that whole like clickbaity thing. Yeah. And dude, not to throw shade because I know it's hard. Like that's the. That's the content creator game. You kind of have to do it, but I love, but, but I love that you don't have to do it for some reason, and yet you're getting on. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's that's yeah. nice to hear. And uh, now, like, let's get into like, how did you uh, get your role in Warp Frog, uh, and what is your role? It's kind of a long story, so I'll give you like the short, the short answer. The short answer was um, years ago, before Blade and Sorcery was Blade and Sorcery. I was a YouTuber also, and I was just starting off, and I was just trying to get started, and I was just a little guy, I'm sure you'll know all about this, and when you're a little guy, no one kind of really wants to know about you, so yeah. you're kind of just scrounging around for what games are small and upcoming, and trying to give trying to give some light to like the little indie kind of games. Yeah, um, that's true. And <clears throat> yeah, so that was my little thing, and, and my niche too was VR. And so when I started off, the whole my whole thing was like, hey, I'm going to be this anti-hyperbole, anti-sensationalist YouTuber uh, and not do clickbait. I'll refuse to do all that stuff. So maybe you kind of understand that way. I appreciate your channel. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I won't do all that kind of stuff. So that was like my thing. And then I remember when I came across Blade and Sorcery, I met Cosby over Reddit and... Uh, you know, I got involved with the beta there and dude, I just absolutely fell in love with the game and uh -huh. messaged Cosby about it. And I was like, man, I was like, you, have, <laughs> you, I was like, you have the next big thing here. Yeah. And he's, and he was real like, ah, you know, I'm not too sure about that. And like, ah, just, it's very early days. It's not ready. And I had a lot of experience working with, with these little indie devs and reviewing their games that no one had heard of because just no one had marketing or publicity or community or hype. And I said to Cosby, I was like, dude, I was like, don't let, don't let this be that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah that's really smart. Dude, that's I was really like, smart. yeah, I was, I was like, put the word out now. I was like, please, I was like, let me blast this all over the place. I was like, I really am excited about this game. And he is in the same boat as me uh, of like that feeling of like, I, we, you know, I don't want to pimp out this game with a bunch of clickbait. And I was like, I know. I was like, me too. <laughs> but I was like, but I was like, people will really like this game. I was like, they'll genuinely like this game. I was like, we won't do clickbait. I was like, I swear to you. I was like, that's not me. I'm not that guy. Um, and he was real like, ah, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> and man, I, I was in that beta for months, just every day, just hammering Ooh. them with, with like, you know, uh, positive vibes and like, keep going and like, let's keep, make this game. Like, you know, let's do it. And then after months of badgering him about it, I was like, look, just let me do just this one Reddit post, just one. And I was like, I, I bet you people will love it. And so he's like, okay, just the one. I was like, you just the one. 
So I did the one Reddit post about it and the rest is history. You know, it just really blew up. Everyone's, how do I get this game? How do I play this game? And, um, you know, when the game launched uh, to the public, yeah, uh, that's when it went really crazy. Yeah, he, was yeah. just so, he was so swamped with uh, messages and stuff. He, he turned to me and he said, listen, you seem to have a good kind of in with the community side of things. Uh, you know, would you be interested in doing community management side? So Ooh. I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I never did that in my life. But I was like, yeah, let's like, give that a go. Yeah, that sounds good fun. And I, I love the Blade and Source community. Everyone's as excited as I am. And I'm just a player too. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. And that was kind of my in, man. And then from that, it just grew, you know, like, you know, just being associated with games so long and being associated with the game so long and, you know, becoming good friends with Cosby. And so then it grew into like, I started doing the marketing side of things and started doing like business side for Warfrog. And I call myself producer, but I'm technically not really a producer. Or if I am, I'm the worst producer in the world because instead of like managing schedules, I'm like, no, let's add this and let's add this <laughs> and just like balloon in the schedule. Uh, but 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 yeah, it's kind of like I, I wear like a lot of hats. I call myself producer, but I wear kind of like a lot of hats and I do like a lot of business marketing and community side for Warfrog. Ah, okay. So, so yeah. Uh, so that's really like inspirational and uh, it really shows that like you can start from like nothing yeah. and then you just blow it, up. Man, you, you know. Do you know something? I never did a I never did a marketing thing in my life. I never did a community thing in my life. Never oh did, my! Never did, never did a video game thing in my life. But I'll tell you one thing: if you're into something, yeah, that's that's the most important thing. Find something you're interested in, and the rest is a lot easier. I'm not saying it's not work, but I'm saying at least you don't want to like you know jump in front of a car. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like it, it's much better than doing something soul destroying. Like, I gotta say, like uh, I get. I can match it with how I started YouTube because yeah, uh, yeah, I was interested in like we are the theme we are. So uh, when I started, it was something I was generally interested in. So that made it so much easier, as you said. But yeah, I just had to say totally. that. And and man, don't, like I forget now, but on YouTube, I think don't you have something like two hundred thousand subs or something like that i had the uh, i have uh, one hundred and sixty thousand subs yeah okay one hundred and sixty thousand, and then you have tiktok subs too don't you yeah yeah oh you have seen my so, tiktoks too what <laughs> so so yeah so so think about this man right yeah. you you're just doing something that you enjoy like you know content creation and stuff like that yes. one hundred and sixty thousand people just youtube not even counting tiktok just youtube it's like an it's like a stadium yeah that's people true are just sitting around to watch you and hear what you have to say because they're interested in your enthusiasm for this particular topic. How crazy is that? <laughs> That's so wild. I, I love that. And yeah. it's uh, unreal to me. Like, I, I remember like watching other people videos and like, oh, I wish I was like, and then I just started and boom. <laughs> now now you are the guy now, now yeah. people will now there's other people looking at your videos being like oh dude i wish i could be like <laughs> this guy and i hope i get to where he is someday and and yeah. so forth and so on man it's crazy and that's what i love that's what like youtube gives you so much opportunity in in doing what you love uh, so that's what i love about youtube but yeah you're involved in the development of uh, blame sorcery you're really involved and you're like yeah what's the worst uh, and best sides of working on the game mm. yeah I, I i yeah i see every part of this you know so it's pretty cool because uh, yeah. i get to see like the kind of behind the scenes and then i get to see the development and then i get to see the the after which is like how everyone engages with the game Um i i'd say the the worst part um is probably like you know like bugs and stuff like that and things that like delay the game and like we have plans for release and then like bugs happen and it's like oh no like it's not going to be this week we're going to release and the <laughs> only reason that sucks is because um well one is like it sucks seeing the you know my friends who are the warfrog developers you know sweating it on the bugs that sucks but the other thing is that it just sucks because it delays it for the community and it's like everyone's excited to play and then we're like oh we know like we want to release but we can't and <laughs> everyone's just bummed out and then we're bummed out and so so that I, I would say that's that's the hardest uh part or, or the worst part about like game development it's just you kind of just you just don't know like what kind of bugs are going to come along the, and then the, the best part of it is i'd say like everything else you know like we we're chatting about like you know I, I had many jobs in my life you know and uh Every job I feel like I had, I feel like I walked through the doors and 
you just get this pit in your stomach and you're just like, uh, I just don't want to be here, <laughs> you know? But I, I would imagine that a lot of people know that feeling. And with Warfrog, it's like, I don't think I've ever gone to work and said, like, I don't want to be here. Because it's it's like, um, you're, 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 like you're making a product that people with joy and it, it makes people happy. Like, that's great. Like, why wouldn't you want to do that? And it's creative and it's fun and it's like, you know, you go to work one day and it's like, okay, what's going to be in the video game? Let's all think and talk about it. That's cool. You know what I mean? It's nice. Like, um, and then it, what's really super cool then too is, you know, when we do a release or whatever, just seeing the community uh, yeah, response to it. Like, yeah. have you, well, you probably have because you're, you know, you're a creator. But, you know, for most people, it's like you do a job and no one ever says anything to you you know yeah. no one ever says thank you even you know in most cases yeah so it's weird to do a job and then like you see all the people just be like oh my god i'm so happy or like oh i love this update or great job war frog you know you're, you're doing great you know i'm so excited to play this and and you know you're just sitting at home reading this and you're just like that feels good you know because it's like yeah. you know the, the team put a big bunch of work into this and now like people are happy as, as a result and like, what job do you get that? You know, like, it's so awesome. <laughs> that, that sounds really cool. And I, I love that you have found, like, a dream job. I, I hope that it's yeah, it a dream man. job. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Like, I, I say this to Cosby all the time, like, and he feels the same way. Because, I mean, yeah. before Warfrog, he didn't, uh, you know, he just worked a normal job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, he, he risked it all to, to, to start Warfrog Studio. But... But yeah, like we, we both said the same thing. Like, it's not that it's not work because I think I've worked like more hours in my life ever in this job than I have in any job. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's work that you enjoy doing. It's, it's weird. It's like, it's almost like your hobby yeah. or something, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I can't really describe it. It's like, I enjoy doing this stuff and, and Cosby does too, you know? It's real weird. I never thought I'd say that about like a job. <laughs> I remember telling my mom that I... I did YouTube as a hobby, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> then she invested money in a VR headset for me, and that VR headset, ah. I use that VR headset to this day. If it was not for that VR headset, I would not have my channel right now. So oh, that, that's that, great, man. And she said, the day I bought the headset, uh, or she bought the headset, uh, she's, uh, she said, you need to find a job. So, <laughs> and then that headset made me get a job. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really cool. Love it. Now, now look at you now. What does what does she say about you now? <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, jumping over to the next question: uh, How many devs are working on the game right now? Oh, I I have to guess because yeah. we we've been hiring a bunch, but it's approximately if you count everybody, yeah. including like everybody in the Warfrog team, it's probably about twenty five. I would say. Okay. But it's a lot of people, but it's a bit misleading because we have some people who are uh, super part time, and we have some people who are like contractors. So they're f so, and, and some of them are full time contractors. So like they work for Warfrog all the time. Then we also have contractors who they just come in and help us when we need them. Like for example, like concept art or something like that. Like, and 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 then we have developers who are like full time developers, and then we have some developers who are just like part time. Uh, like just jump in to help out, but 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 all in all, like every single person, you know, all included, there's something like twenty five or so people involved. L like I say, a lot of people are are, are contractors, but um, but yeah, no, it really did blow up. Um, it was like around update eight, yeah, was when the the momentum started going, and I'd say at that point we were about ten people or so. And then update 11, I think, was when it was like, okay, it's going crazy, like we're really <laughs> snowballing big now. That was really insane for me to play in the dungeons first time. I remember the yeah. first like I remember the first game and the experience I had with the first. That's yeah. a good memory, and I I won't I won't forget that. <laughs> yeah, man. I I me I was just just gonna quick say me too. Like I, I remember like we doing update A, and then I remember that conversation with Cosby where yeah. he was like, okay, I, he's like, I think we can do this thing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm calling it dungeons. I was like, okay. And he's like, it's going to be like, you know, uh, this like semi-procedurally generated dungeon crawl. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> like, you know, like, and, and how is this going to work exactly? And, um, and then I remember, you know, when they showed me the, the, the prototype video, 
because there was no playable yeah. build back then. And I saw the prototype, and I was like, oh, this is like wild. And I was like, so are we going to like do this? Is this going to be like a thing in the game? He's like, yeah. He's like, I think we can do it for like maybe like update 10. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, I was like, update 10. I was like, that's crazy. And that's like when the whole idea for Crystal Hunt came about. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it because I was like, are we really going to do this? I was like, this is going to take about like two years. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was like, yeah, but like the players are going to enjoy it because, you know, we always get that criticism. Oh, man, it, it, it it's a dagger in my heart. But uh, the biggest critics of Blade and Sorcery say things like, oh, tech demo. There's no game. Wow. You know, it's just because because there's no story or there's no uh. like, progression <laughs> system. And I hate that and I don't agree with that, but whatever. But anyway, so we, we thought we'd bring out Crystal Hunt as kind of like a, a counter to that. So it's like, okay, well, look, if you don't like Sandbox, then this is for you, you know? Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, my God, what a, you know, what a huge undertaking it's been. <laughs> That's insane, bro. <laughs> so could you like walk us through what's new in the U12? Definitely. The, uh, the big one is the mod manager. That's obviously uh, the flagship feature. That was... Um, and ask since day one, I think I would say. It, like on on PC VR, people wanted it when the game first released. Then people kind of got used to Nexus and it wasn't so bad. And then with Nomad, it's been a constant ask because f- for for Nomad players, uh, you know, most don't have PCs. So it's always been a pain for them to mod. So we always wanted to do something like that. The problem was just like, okay, how do we do it? <laughs> like this is gonna t- this is gonna be tough to figure out. But anyway, there, you know, there you go. It worked out. We got the mod manager working, so now people can install mods one click in the headset. Um, and then in the sim, in, in the game itself, um, in features, we have physics-based women. That was oh, that's inevitable. Nice. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I tried it. Out. I love it. I really love that, it. It had to happen. Um, ever since we released U10 and we had war. You know, day one again, people were like, "Okay, well, now you got to add swimming." It's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so it seemed like that was inevitable. So that's cool. Breakables. Yeah. That yeah. was something I didn't think was ever going to happen. I couldn't believe it, and you know, it works well too. That's the yeah. Like, that's... I, I really am surprised we were able to do that one, but that's been real enjoyable. And now I can't play without it. Now it's like <laughs> I can't remember the time when we couldn't break people into crates and, and oh, tables yeah. and stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been nice. Uh, what else we got the dungeon rooms we got a ton of dungeon rooms I think it was 24 uh, 24 entirely new rooms and then about 14 side rooms and oh that just God. snowballed yeah that's, that's snowballed Be- because the, the dungeon itself the outpost I think has 50 rooms at the moment so 24 new rooms is like half the, <laughs> the amount of <laughs> like official rooms. so that's insane it just snowballed, man. It just, um, it it was kind of like, okay, we'll add a couple of rooms into outposts for the update. And then, uh, like, just these rooms kept churning out. Like, Drags was a big proponent of that because he was, he was one of the main guys just cranking on that. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, and then we had the, the Enviro team cranking on it. And yeah, they were just pumping out, pumping out rooms. So when we got to U12, it was like, oh my God, uh, you know, maybe we should have saved some of these for, <laughs> For 1.0 update, but <laughs> it's okay, man. Did Drags uh, help with the development of Blade and Sorcery in any other way than, than you just said? Like, you mean, does he do other stuff on the team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dra- 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 Drags, I don't know if you know about him. He used to be a, a modder for Blade and Sorcery. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I install a lot of his mods, so that's Oh, cool, I cool, cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the guy. He's an old friend now. He he started off as a modder, then he joined uh, the Discord, and he became a, a, a moderator like of the community. So he was just like always a friend, always kind of hanging out. And then uh, when he joined the team, he originally joined as... Uh, like QA and integration. Oh. And so he was doing like, actually, I think it was originally, it was just QA, I, I think. And uh, uh, then he moved from that into like integration and stuff like that. Um, but now he's kind of moved into like envir- environments and stuff. And he had done a couple of rooms for U10. Uh, some of the kind of really classic rooms, like the climbing chasm, you know that room? Uh, and uh, the, sure. the one with the, it was, it's in the trailer. It's that big, huge chasm oh, room yeah, where, yeah. where the guy fall that's his room and he also did uh uh the, the there's a it's also the trailer did want a zip line it's like an outdoors room there's like a bridge and a zip yeah. line 
And uh, yeah, so he did like classic films like that. And and the one thing I'll say about him is he just loves to get involved in everything. He just like he's even having to go modeling now. He just he just loves doing stuff. And uh, yeah, so he's getting involved. But but yeah, we have a, an environment environment team and. Um, uh, like the most classic rooms you know are probably by uh, uh, one of the Warfrog team who's the oldest but you probably don't know him is Kel and he's amazing he's he does like a lot of our Enviro rooms and then uh, CDM Pants is the lead of the Enviro team he's always cranking on like just improving the quality of the graphics and stuff like that then we have Vin yeah we have Vin then who does all the like blockouts and stuff so it's been really, really great, man. That's nice to hear. And you include, like, it's really cool that you include the modders in the development of Blame Sorcery. That's really cool to hear. Yeah. I love that. And uh, there's not a lot of games that do that because it's it's kind of risky. Uh, I think they they feel like it's risky to make it own, but it's all well, about the community. So that's that's it. And, and like, the, the attitude we had on it was like, if modders are making content for the game and they're because they just love making content for the game, well, doesn't that kind of suggest that they like like the game and you know like that they want to? And that that seems like the best uh, asset for for and in my opinion anyway, it's like wouldn't you want someone working on the game who actually loves working on the game? You know, and, yeah, and don't forget, Cosby was a modder. Yeah, that's started. true. That's so, true. I I know that yeah. actually. I just forgot to tell, <laughs> to say. Yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, that. so yeah, we're, so we're we're huge mod fans. It's like it, the, the attitude I have is, and I know Cosby feels this way too. It's like if you have someone who's like making mods for a game, and they're doing it for no money, they're doing it just because they love doing it, they love the game, and they love like players playing their mods. How can you not like that? You know what I mean? Like, modders are, they're what keep me in PC. Like, I, I just think they're the greatest people That's ever. true. That's really yeah, true. And, and, and not just like Blade and Sorcery. I mean, modders in general for like video games. I just love modders yeah. so much. So, yeah. So, like, we, on, on the Warfrog team, I, we, we have a, I think like half our development team is ex Blade and Sorcery modders, you know? So. I know there's a lot about hype about story in Blade and Sorcery. Do you know anything about a story that's going to be in the game? Yes. So, so this is the thing. People always are talking about this, the like storyline, or will it be a storyline? I will say we're focusing more on lore than we are on storyline. And what I what I mean what I mean by that is we have this fantasy world called Biet. And we have all these nations of the world that we've figured out. And this game, Blade and Sorcery, takes place in a nation of Erizin. That's the thing. Ah, okay. so, so in the full release of the game, we're going to have a new mode called Crystal Hunt. And sometimes people, um, sometimes people informally refer to this as progression mode. And um, it's basically going to have a loose narrative that the player is going to follow uh, to like develop skills and stuff like that and you know buy and sell equipment and progress now why i say there's no storyline is because it's n it's not anything like um let's say like skyrim or something like that where the player is like the central focus of this narrative and the whole world revolves around the player and there's some kind of like narrator t you know telling you what's going on and what's happening it's not like that at all i would say it's going to be more like yeah, maybe something like Dark Souls or something like where the storyline is just pieced together, inferred from lore of the world. We're putting a ton of effort in. Hell yeah. But what, what, what it means is if you're a really hardcore player and you're into this game and you put a bunch of effort like exploring our world and finding lore and finding like notes and, and books and things oh. like that, you can piece together like history of the world some hints on like other nations, some events, and you can piece together like the 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 narrative we have going. Like what did I I really am apprehensive to say storyline, but you can piece together the like, quote unquote storyline of the game. But if you're a super casual player and you really don't care about that, you could probably finish Crystal Hunt mode and not even realize like <laughs> anything about the game. You, you might be kind of confused. You might really not. You know, you'll just be uh, you'll just be going through the motions. And so 
for those people, I think you're going to walk away and just think, ah, oh, yeah, Blade and Sorcery is this, uh, you know, physics-based action game. But yeah. the real hardcore players will, will, will dig up. And I bet you, man, I bet you on the, uh, I bet you on our community side, I bet you there's going to be players who are going to be piecing together, like detectives, are going to be piecing together all the lore they, they learned with other community members and trying to, like, put it out, like, spread it all on a table and be like, okay, like, figure this world out. Yeah, I know a lot of YouTubers that do that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, YouTubers are going to do that for sure. I, and I can't wait for that. That's going to yeah, be Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, so, so that's the summary. The summary is that it's not going to be, like, any overt storyline that holds the player's hand and says, look, you're the chosen one, you know, you're the champion and the whole game is about you. It's not like that, but it's more like uh, hidden lore. Is there any possibility that this game will appear on PSVR? PSVR? Um, well, PSVR, I would say no, uh, because of tech reasons, but PSVR 2, uh, d- d- I would love it to, and I'm, I know Cosby would love it to, too. I think everyone would love it to, um, especially because there's not like a lot of uh, physics games like that on uh, PSVR 2. And from what I've heard, I have heard that the PSVR 2 hardware is very good, and apparently it's so good that, in theory, we could probably port the PC VR version Ooh. of the game. So it would be like not even Nomad, uh, port you know it would be like a pc vr port of the game or something similar to pc vr uh, over onto ps vr 2 and that would be awesome yeah it would be. um you know that would be real cool because then like peace uh, playstation players could play blade and sorcery at you know the highest spec we have it and that would just be cool oh now having God. having said all this we do not currently have plans for the port and the only reason is because we're so swamped right now so I think kind of like our vibe right now is let's finish 1.0, let's release the game fully and then figure out, okay, what's the next step? Are we going to do a PlayStation port or what are we going to do? Um, and, you know, the nice thing about that too will be if we do it that way and we do port it to PlayStation, well, then at least the PlayStation players get to play the game fully, you know, the full release. It won't be, it won't be early access or anything like that. So that's cool. Um but but then there's some there's some other kind of complications like I don't think we can get mods on PlayStation. I I don't think they'll allow it. Uh, so that would kind of suck because mods are such a huge part of the game. So uh, well, you know, at least if, if if we can't put mods on PlayStation, I suppose at the very least, at least Crystal Hunt will be included. So at least it'll be like a fully packaged game at that point. But but yeah. anyway, we'll see. So so yeah, it's it's a big we'll see. Uh, but we would like to definitely if Cosby knows about my videos that would be really fun for my community to know I don't know why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, the, the, the genuine answer is I don't know I just don't know yeah um, but but my uh, my uh, inkling of it would be he probably has seen content in, in the sense that you know like it's probably popped up somewhere when he's like looking at oh, you know, yeah. looking to you know what's what Blade content starts what, sorry what Blade and Source content is there but but I would be shocked if he knew any content creators by name <laughs> because I know he's he just works on the game just constantly and like you, you know and, and and so he doesn't really kind of for leisure get to like you know watch content or like uh-huh. uh, really do much stuff in the community for leisure the, the man just works like constantly like when, when i used to live in california yeah. i was eight hours behind him you know like eight, eight hours time difference and i used to get up at 6 a.m and I'd, i i would get up at 6 a.m he would be online <laughs> i'd be working until about, you know 4 5 p.m he'd still be working oh my and he's, god and he's eight god. hours ahead of me do you know what i mean so it's just like he, he is literally the hardest worker i've ever met in my life he, he is cranking it so for that reason I don't know if he's, uh, you know, how informed he is about like specific YouTubers and creators and that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, okay, but, okay. Uh, but the sheer volume of content you've made, I'm sure it's <laughs> popped up on his radar sometime. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, 
my older videos was kind of like of only focusing on brutality but then i got through yeah. and i want to like show my skills and i want to do everything without slow motion and i want to yeah, throw yeah. knives i want to i want to aim perfectly and get the best clip ever and you know and that really yeah. upgraded my content so yeah i i like it i i like that it's just good gameplay that's yeah thank the, you that that's just the content yeah i like that yeah uh, and uh, I also talked to um, Donald Blue Content, uh, Drifter, you know him. Oh, probably. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love him. He's a really good content creator. Yeah, I, I know really him good. real well, yeah. Yeah.